welcome to today's DC Today. Uh, my name is Brian Seitel. It's uh, Tuesday, the 25th, and uh, got uh, uh, here in Newport Beach office and, and kind of a nice up market day to kind of go through with you a little bit. Uh, come back from our trip from uh, New York City last week, uh, where we do every year sort of a, a 20 plus uh, manager meeting uh, type of marathon trip together to kind of go through go through positions, go through the managers that we work with. And so I'll have a little bit of a couple of takeaways that I can probably sprinkle in uh, throughout this uh, this recording uh, for today as well. But um, update today, actually futures last night were slightly negative. We had an update yesterday, not a huge update, but uh, but but an update yesterday. Futures were negative last night, pointed to a, probably a negative 100 open on the Dow. And uh, but I think what happened was markets opened and uh, you immediately saw rates come down kind of across the yield curve. So with falling interest rates, you had dollar came off a little bit and you kind of started to see the bid catch in equities. And the nice thing about the day was that it, it sort of built on itself. And so we ended up sort of closing up 337 points or so on the Dow, which was right about the high for the day. So this is the third uh, straight day of gains. We've had a couple of negative uh, days last week, but this is uh, we're up about 11 percent or so from the lows of October. And I, I definitely wouldn't say that it's off to the races or anything like that. We've got a lot to go through here today, but um, but po positive signs nonetheless. Of note today, um, you still have the volatility index kind of hovering around this sort of 28, 29 level. It's not hyper elevated uh, showing mass stress, but it's high enough to just sort of show you that we're not out of the weeds uh, here on this thing yet. Some of the top news stories, I think we may have mentioned yesterday a little, but there was uh, uh, the what I think is the third uh, prime minister uh, in uh, in the UK here over the last uh, couple of months uh, 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 came into office yesterday, and he's got uh, kind of a steep hill to climb economically with getting UK house in order there. Elon Musk uh, pledged to close his Twitter transaction by Friday. You can tell by the look on my face how likely I think that that actually is. We'll see. Um, interesting, yesterday th there was a big sell-off in in Chinese equities, um, particularly te the tech se sector, and, and we spoke about that a little bit. And frankly, I had I had assumed that you would have seen a rebound today, um, just given the massive fifteen percent sell off in, in a day. Markets are are kind of notoriously unfriendly to having what essentially is a, a third and and potentially a, 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 a you know a term that will last in perpetuity with with the president in China kind of kind of keeping hold of his power. Um, and, and his goal is more less to do with growth, which is what they have their mantra has been for for many years. And it's shifting more to, to staying in power. And so the, the goal there is to sort of democratize the wealth in the country a little bit. And tech sector is, is really kind of falling out of bed with that. Um, and so I would have assumed you'd seen a, a kind of a rebound rally just just uh, from yesterday's sell off. And you really didn't see that today. Um, so there's some some real staying power there. Consumer confidence was lower today. You know, it's it's a lagging indicator. I don't put a lot of uh, time going into consumer confidence. It's basically a number that tells us what we already know uh, about what we've just gone through, and, and a little less predictive about what the future may hold. But but nonetheless, it was a little bit weaker today, along with the Richmond Fed index that came came in a little weaker. So you know, for better or for worse, some some slowing numbers, and and ultimately, I think. Fed is starting to get what they want. David had in the Ask David section today, uh, the question was regarding, you know, are interest rates alone enough to bring down inflation in the economy? Is that enough to sort of slow things down? And what if rates on the, uh, you know, rates just go go up on their own, that, that type of a thing? And his answer I thought was, was really um, well said. And I've included a chart um, for you to take a look at. But the, the premise is basically, um, Two things, no, you know. Number one, there are parts of the market that are more sensitive to rates. You know, housing, for example, would be very sensitive to interest rates, whereas things like food, um, you know, some other things like energy, uh, really aren't. And so, um, you know, to answer the the reader's question, uh, the answer is yes and no. Um, the the chart is there to sort of show you perspective over time, and it kind of goes over the last Fed tightening cycles going back for you know forty or fifty years, and you can see what where the terminal rate is, meaning where, where they stop raising rates. When, when is the point at which they stop hiking um, and then ultimately cut? And then where is CPI when they do that? And you can kind of see where, you know, where history shows. Ultimately, 
the Fed raising rates and CPI tend to move together. So rates tend to go up and CPI comes down and they converge and then and then ultimately they either cause the next recession or um, there's no need for them to continue hiking and they begin cutting at some point. But you can sort of see where we are today, which is a Fed funds rate effectively at 3.3% and CPI at 8.2. So, you know, th those two numbers need to converge. And so when I get rallies like today, I'll take them and I, I uh, like to see uh, some green on my screen and our clients do as well. Um, you just have to put this in perspective. This isn't the ninth inning here. We're, we're probably something like sixth or seventh um, uh, with the World Series coming up, to use that analogy. But there's some time to come. The, the real question is just going to be how long it takes for those numbers to converge. How, you know, how quickly can inflation come down uh, before the Fed is going to have an official way to pivot? And so in the meantime, maybe you'll get rallies like today with rates coming down and dollar coming off. That's fine. Um, but we're just not quite out of the woods there yet. And I thought that chart went well with, with David's uh, Ask David section. The reason is, and this was actually a strategist comment today that I thought was, was, was good. Um, it was anecdotal, but there was uh, an American economist, uh, Samuelson last name. And when talking about what it does to have negative real rates over time, uh, he said it would make sense to pave over the Rockies because over time, of course, your investment would be recovered just by the fuel savings in the vehicle over, over 20 or 30 or 40 years. And the, the point to saying that is that negative uh, uh, interest rate manipulation like that, negative real rates is not natural, number one. And number two, it's distortive of markets. And, and David had a nice comment uh, on that uh, as well, uh, separately in, in his Ask David section. We still see weakness in housing. I mean, that's nothing new. It's it's not you know it's it's, it's something we've already talked about, spoken about. But we, we are seeing month over month declines that we haven't seen since technically two thousand and nine. So just keep in mind, you know, seven percent mortgages and rising rates affect different parts of the market more than others. Um, also interesting, I thought when looking at um, flows, and, and I do pay attention to this. It, it's you know you can see ETF exchange traded fund flows in different sectors. So energy is up, you know, call it 60% on the year and fund flows are something like 600 million, uh, you know, something like that on, on the year. So it's taking in some money. People are noticing energy has been left for dead basically for, for many years and people are kind of paying attention and moving money and that makes sense. But when you look at sort of the, the high valuation tech part of the market and there's an ETF particular to that sector, um, it's down 60% on the year and it's taken in over $1.3 billion my point to saying that is just energy has run. It's the clear outperformer in, in talking about or speaking of our New York trip. It was one of the themes that permeated most of the meetings, not every meeting, but most of the meetings was, was a very positive atmosphere for energy and the energy sector. But just given those flows, it, I mean, it's it's picking up some momentum and it's getting noticed, but uh, not like I would expect with an up 60 year versus some other things that are down, in other words. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say, I know David has, um, in Friday's Dividend Cafe, spent time kind of going through our literally 40 pages of notes each on this meeting trip. Um, so I don't want to steal his thunder and, and, and go through it too much. But I'll give you a couple of takeaways that, aside from the energy sector during these meetings, um, there is value on the short end of the high quality bond uh, curve right now. And, and so when we looked at our fixed income portfolios and when we're talking about them, you know, it's, it's, there's always a point in which you want to go out on the risk spectrum. Um, when you think that you're maybe coming out of a recession or, 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 you know, things can't really get much worse, you know, time to kind of risk up a portfolio in, in bonds. I think that's fine to do. But in the meantime, first off, we're not there yet. Um, so what we've kind of talked about and what we heard a lot of was, you know, don't, don't feel like you need to really go out on a credit risk spectrum in, in bonds. You know, you, you can get nice yields, you know, three, four, five, six percent staying high quality, staying short term, and then kind of let things play out and then do your rotation when you feel more comfortable or, or convicted that things are kind of moving through. Um, we've talked about China a little bit. Um, you know, I, I wasn't sure originally when Xi Jinping, the president, kind of started enacting some of his policy um, to bring down the cost of education, to try to spread wealth around the technology sector and bring down the housing market and those things, how lasting that would be. I, I assumed there would be a blinking point sooner than there has been. But one of the things that we heard quite a bit of in New York is that 
not that managers are giving up on it or, or anything like that. China is here to stay and, and it's a big growth engine in the world, but the patience of waiting for that to happen is getting a little long in the tooth. And so people are basically moving on and, and you're seeing that in investment around the world um, coming outside of China uh, too. So I, I thought that was interesting and we'll have to see how that, that plays out over time. Um, most managers, and I'll end it with this, um, again, I, not, not stealing here thunder with what you'll read in a much more eloquent way on Friday. Um, but most managers are looking for a shallow recession in 2023. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I would take a, a vehemently opposed view to that. Um, you know, historically in, in rate tightening cycles, they do tend to move the pendulum a little too far and, and that's, that's the result of it. But what I would say is that markets will price that in and are pricing that in well in advance. Um, that's what we're seeing right now. Um, so I, I wouldn't draw the distinction between uh, you know, potential of a recession next year. And that means another 25% down on the S&P at all. Uh, in fact, I, if anything, I would say something to the opposite effect of that. But listen, with that, that's sort of around the horn on the day. I appreciate you listening. Uh, as always, fun to be with you today. Um, I'm traveling to our Bend, Oregon uh, office tomorrow uh, at the Bonson Group and, and having some meetings there. So Trevor Cummings will be joining you tomorrow. And uh, please reach out with questions. I'm here to answer them. Thanks so much.